Hi, this is Sean Bodley with Clear Technologies. I'm a senior IT consultant and recognized as an IBM Power Champion. And this is a demonstration of IBM's geographically dispersed resiliency for IBM Power Systems. Now, this will not be an introduction or an implementation. This is simply a demonstration of the product. This is an overview of my test environment. At my primary location, I have one SA24 with the uh, firmware listed here. I have dual VIOs with, at uh, present time, is the latest level of 22520. I have a V7000 at each location. And then at my backup site, I have a single S814 and another V7000. I also have an HMC at each location with the latest and greatest levels of 886 SP2. And for this demonstration, I'm going to show one Red Hat partition and one AIX partition from the primary site actually failing over and recovering at the backup site. Uh, I system LPARs are also supported but are not part of this demo. I have a single CASIS node at my backup site running AIX721 SP2 and I'm using GDR version 1.1 which was released at the end of June this year 2017. If you want more information on what exactly GDR is there is a, a video presentation from Stephen Finnis available uh, it is uh, hot linked here. It was uh, part of the AIX virtual user group presentation a couple of months ago, um, so that should be of value to you. So let me give you a uh, picture overview of my environment. Uh, you can see here my HMC 824, my V7000 at the primary site. My primary site is named Colo, and my backup site is named BPIC. Now, at the time of a failure, what's going to happen is that the LPARs are going to come down on the primary location, the storage replication is going to flip directions, and then the LPARs are going to be activated on the backup node. Now, this is command initiated, this not an automatic failover. So, let's get into the demonstration. Now, I realize this is a little bit busy, but I'm trying to show everything on one screen at one time. So, in the top here is my primary S824, and you can see I have a Red Hat partition and an AIX partition here. It's not just the name. Uh, if we look at the putty sessions on the top right over here, um, this is my Red Hat on the top right. This is my AIX system happens to be a NIM server for the other location, but doesn't really matter that it's a NIM server. Of course, when you move NIM servers to another system, um, you might have to do some reconfig, especially if the CPU ID uh, checking is enabled. The middle screen here is actually the V7000 at my backup site. This is my consistency group. The GDR actually creates that consistency group for you. Uh, and of course, I need to be in the consistent synchronized state before I perform this planned move. And on the bottom down here is my HMC at my backup site. Uh, this is my single 814. I do have dual VIOs. Uh, the second VIO is not shown in this list because it's a higher ID number. But what I really wanted to show here was my AIX CASIS node. This is the main uh, controlling node that we're going to perform the planned move from. So what I'm going to do to actually demonstrate um, that this is replicating is I'm going to go to each one of these systems and I'm just simply going to touch a file called GDR test rel, for example, and temp. Uh, for my AIX server, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, actually, I decided on my AIX server, I'm going to do this in archive, which is a non root VG. It's actually part of my DB2 VG1. So I'm just going to touch a file here called GDR test AIX and show that it's there and show that my GDR 
test is on both of them. So now for my cases node, I'm actually going to perform uh, what's called a find move. And I'm moving it from the primary site of Colo to the backup site of BPIC and type planned. So now we're off and running. If we watch for just a second, we'll get messages that this is going to shut down the systems at the primary location, and we'll also see that uh, status reflected over here on the HM. So you can see my red hat. I'm getting the feedback that it's it's coming down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close these windows because I'm going to have to reopen them after they move anyway. You can also see that my AIX is coming down, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, you can see up top here that the Red Hat one is already showing not activated. The AIX one is still in the shutdown state, which matches what the CASIS node is actually reporting currently. And we're waiting for that shutdown. If I look, I can see these IDs are 21 and 22. I'm going to sort the source system by ID, the source HMC, and you can see that I stop at 20 currently. Uh, these IDs came up because I've already moved these back and forth several times. Uh, so when they come back, it's going to assume those same IDs. If the IDs were already in use, uh, it would create new IDs for you. Okay, so now it says that the AIX1 is also not activated. It's going to start creating the LPARs after it reverses the uh, direction of the storage. You can see here it says reversal has completed, and if I look here now, I can see that the arrow has swapped directions. So now it's running from BPIC as primary to Colo as the uh, secondary. If I look down here now, I can see that the AIX partition has been created, and we should see um, there's the Red Hat one showing up, and it should start activating. Uh, much like LPM, this is actually creating uh, all the virtual adapters and the mappings and the pairings onto the VIOs for us when it creates the LPARs. So now we can see that they're running. They're technically still booting. They're not all the way up yet, um, but they are in the running state. Uh, you can see from the CASIS output that the commands to execute and start have completed, so it's considering that the move is complete. And then it does what's called a rediscovery uh, on the other end, and then it swaps the backup site to make it become the active site. So once this um, completes, I will re-log in to the Red Hat and AIX systems and show that the file that I touched uh, was in fact replicated and shows up on the backup site now. Okay, so this is registered that BPIC is the active site. Um, let me open a couple of PuTTY sessions and get logged back in. Now logged into my Red Hat system. If I change directory over to slash temp and I check and my file is there. So now we will do the same thing for the AIXL PAR. So now I logged into my AIXL PAR. And actually on this one, it's not in temp, it's an archive. And I look, there's my GDR test AIX file. So I'm gonna make a copy of that file and name it number two. Then I'm just gonna put some text in this. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Save it, check the size of that file, check my files over here, and now I'm going to flip it back. So I've got everything up and running on my standby site, the BPIC, 
and I'm going to run a planned move back to the primary location and we'll prove again that the files exist back at the primary site. So I'm going to recall my planned command, moving it from the BPIC to the colo. And while that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and log out of my uh, Linux and AIX. I'll just close out these putty sessions. So if I watch over here, I can see that the Red Hat one is already showing not activated and that the NIM one, the AIX one, is shutting down. So CASIS is saying that it's completed, but my HMC isn't quite showing it yet. Also, it's showing me, telling me that the storage mirror reversal is complete. If I let this refresh, I will see that it is swapped. While that refresh is going on, you can see that my LPARs are being created up top back on the standby or the primary site. And you can see down here they're showing not activated. At the end of this, it'll actually clean up uh, the LPARs from this location. So you can see that the AIX one is starting. And CASIS is saying both has been started, but the update uh, is not showing it yet on the HMC. There we go, now it says it's running. And again, even though this is running, it still takes you know a couple handful of minutes for those to actually boot up. Uh, in the meantime, you can see that the storage replication status did indeed change. If I look down here at the bottom, HMC, um, just like this says that the cleanup has been completed. So the what was the standby site, the LPARs, are gone and they are activating on the primary location. So I'm just going to wait for a minute or two and then I will log in and prove that these files exist that we created when we were running on the backup site. And now you can see that as far as the CASIS manager is concerned, all activities has been completed and the colo is now the active site again. So I will uh, open up my PuTTY sessions and log back into these real quick. OK, this time my AIX um, partition actually beat my Linux partition coming up. So I will check the archive, look and see. And I have both files. And then if I cat that file, I can see that my test message is in there. So I'll wait just a second for the Linux one to finish, and I'll log in and do the same thing on it. OK, so my Red Hat partition finished booting, so I'm going to log into it. If I can actually type the password in correctly. And if I change over to temp, I see both my files are there. I cat the contents of the file. It's all in there. So that actually concludes the demo of performing a GDR planned move between two sites. I would strongly recommend getting services involved. Um, I actually know a guy personally that put this demo together that would be glad to help you and in both planning and implementing a GDR solution in your environment. So feel free to drop me an email at the email address provided at the beginning of this presentation at sbodily at cleartechnologies.net. If you have any questions, feel free to use that and or just leave a comment below and I'll try to address it as soon as I notice it. So as always, thanks for watching.